is for an uh, open meeting law violation, an alleged complaint. Um, first item on the agenda is, uh, of course, in everybody's here. Uh, I think, Denise, you have uh, everybody written down for the minutes. Yes. Thank you. Um, first item up uh, is the alleged open meeting law complaint. And uh, would, can you, can you, I'm sorry. Steve Edgley is uh, muted. Is that his intent? Do you know? I beg your pardon? Steve Edgley is muted. Does, is he aware of that? Oh, there he goes. No. He, he had, yeah, I, I haven't. Is that better? Him. Yep. Okay. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we're we're here for an open meeting law violation. If you didn't hear that, and um, would one of you other select board members like to read the complaint? I can never try. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay. I I can see him. Okay. Complaint of alleged open meeting law violation, November twelfth, twenty twenty. Date of complaint filing. Date and location of alleged violation, November 5th, 2020, Newport Center, Vermont, via Zoom meeting. Complaint against the public body of Newport Center, Vermont, for alleged violation of Vermont's open meeting laws, pursuant to 1 BSA 314, any person aggrieved by a violation of that law must provide the public body with written notice that alleges specific violation and request a specific cure of such violation. Complaint name, Barry Shahagan, 46 Vance Hill Road, Newport Center, Vermont, 05857. Public body that is alleged to have violated the law, select board, Steve Bear, Jerry Waterman, Richard Goldsland. Alleged specific violation of one BSA 311, in enacting this subchapter, the legislature finds and declares that public commissions, boards, and councils, and other public agencies in this state exist to aid in the conduct of the people's business and are accountable to them pursuant to Chapter 1, Article what is that, six of Vermont Constitution. <coughs> Details and cure. I will not tolerate Steve Barrett's racist act of intentional mispronouncing my name and encouraging Bob Best and other and other Best to humiliate me by laughing while I speak at meetings. I have the right to speak at open meetings. This is a sub subterfuge subterfuge to prevent me from speaking at meetings and unacceptable. I feel that my constitutional right has <clears throat> been violated for years and I am here to say once again I will not and do not have to tolerate this. I will react by calling out this type of behavior every time it happens and follow with a complaint. This is not an isolated incident. It is behavior. If this behavior is accepted it will be used to block others as well as when they have important town issues they wish to discuss, I am sure. Freedom of speech and the right to know is an important part of our Constitution, and I will not take this lightly. I believe the select board has created what appears a policy where they use subterfuge to selectively control what can be discussed and what they are accountable for. <coughs> On November 5th at a regular select board meeting, I was speaking on an issue that I was on the agenda for. While I was speaking, one of the residents was laughing and shaking his head, which was disturbing and made it gift difficult to speak on my issues. I asked the select chair why this town resident was laughing, expecting he would bring the meeting to order. The select board chair, Steve Barrett, instead told me I was out of order because I changed the subject by calling out this disruption. <clears throat> this behavior from the resident, Robert Best, has been going on for over a year at most of the meetings while I speak. Steve Barrett, is over, Steve Barrett is overlooks this, which gives encouragement 
and his approval to Bob Best and recently to others that is it okay to harass a resident if it is a subject Steve Barrett does not approve of. This is not the first time Steve Barrett has used subterfuge to not allow me to speak at these meetings. Because I dare discuss sensitive issues of money, contracts, and the open meeting laws. This Bob Best behavior started over a year ago when he first appeared at a meeting I attended. I had never met him, nor did I know who he was. It was obvious he was there to harass me. Bob Best publicly threatened me at this meeting while I was videotaping the meeting. Bob Best shouted, if you point that video camera at me, I will knock it out of your hand. Steve Barrett did nothing in the way of bringing the meeting to order. Instead, he told me I was out of order when I reacted to the threat. I believe that Steve Barrett, Bear Ups, encourage this behavior from Bob Best being that Steve Barrett is Bob Best's neighbor. I also suspect this incident was discussed and arranged by Steve Barrett, who himself had recently at that time told me to get the video camera out of the room at a meeting. The threat from Bob Best, according to my wife, Jane Shahagan, a former paralegal in the city of Boston, is that Robert Best's threat was a crime and could be a felony crime. <clears throat> under certain conditions. Threat of willful, malicious property damage, not much different if someone were to threaten to smash a person's car windshield. Steve Barrett allowed this and still does not overlook Bob Best's best ill and sometimes criminal behavior. No surprise, Bob Best is a retired police officer. Perhaps she, he should get a job as a security guard at Walmart if he still wants to police people. Ha, ha, ha. My constitutional right has been violated. I was not allowed to discuss these disturbances and criminal threats. I have had to endear over a year and it continues on. Right to speak at open meeting. I will not tolerate this conspiracy of Steve Barrett uses to control people using threats and intimidation. This issue could be resolved easily if Steve Barrett would simply would have simply made Bob Best correct his unacceptable behavior by bringing the meeting to order and not allow this type of behavior, which is his job as a select board chair. Instead, he chooses to scapegoat me by suggesting that I was out of order when I react to this situation. This disturbance and humiliation have now caught on to other residents who are joining in along with Robert Best with the behavior of the same. My only alternative is to file complaints, which is an inconvenience to the other two selectmen and the town clerk who has to make, take the time to attend the meeting and respond. Steve Barrops, again, scapegoating me at this very, very meeting by saying that I should file a complaint at a superior court instead of multiple OML complaints. My reaction to this is if you do not, not like complaints filed, comply with the OML laws. This is the issue. The select board refuses to comply. I would like to quote Steve Barrett's on a complaint filed in January 2020 when it was suggested as a cure to my complaint. Schedule special meetings to discuss the open meeting laws and work towards complying with them. In response to this, the select board came to a unanimous decision, decision of no wrongdoing. Steve Barrett said, we are going to keep it the same. I will also keep it the same by exercising my constitutional rights and filing OML complaints when my rights have been violated as were in this case. The cure, schedule a special meeting to have a discussion of compliance and awareness, the open meeting laws with a plan to stay aware of new amendments and issues as is done in many other townships who respect our constitutional rights that's the complaint in, in its entirety thank you very much now um barry would you like to speak to that yes i would i know there's been some issue about me filing complaints but i assure you if you go to the state level you will find what i'm what i am doing by filing complaints is exactly as the law intended. 
to balance the power. Recently on that last meeting, when I was blocked and thrown out of the meeting, Steve, I felt as though Steve was punishing me. Steve, you're not my father and you're not my employer. You are a public servant. And if you read our Constitution, your job is to serve and to be accountable at all times. You have designed your own set of rules that is contrary to our Constitution. And I will continue. I know you're going to deny all wrongdoing and not do the cure, but you will not win this battle. Every year, these constitutional, the uh, open meeting laws are amended to make them stronger. They were intended to be, to take, to be light, to not be rigid on selectmen because they are doing their a job, and but their tolerance wears thin when they keep denying uh, any, when they keep not complying. So you're not getting anywhere. And I get this feeling uh, that Jerry and both you and Jerry suggested we should go to to, so to Superior Court and fight this out and be done with it. Uh, it doesn't work that way. And another thing I'd like to remind Rick Goslin on, who said when I about the complaints, he goes, they don't, because he is a court officer or an employee as far as I know of. And, and he said, when I said we'd bring it to court and it could be a jury or, you know, a, a, you know, a judge would rule on it, he said, they don't, they don't take these laws seriously or something like that to that effect. Well, let me remind you something. First of all, an open meeting law complaint, when you bring it to court, has to be superior court. There could very well be a jury or uh, a judge would, uh, most likely a jury, because the reason is they have this is because the laws develop through case law. And that's why they, if that, that's why you cannot file a small claims comport. They are, they are taken seriously. And another thing, Rick Goslin, in in uh, one of the laws that said about uh, having a uh, superior court trial, and um, to uh, go further on an open meeting law complaint, and I can show. I should have brought the law. It's in there though. Uh, I think it's uh, to it's yeah it's VSA um, uh, fifteen three one five VSA three one five and that would be uh, um, you know uh, punishment no nope, they didn't call it punishment uh, something like that anyway um, when yeah when when the clerk in the superior court that you works at and I've talked to her I talked about this with her. When they get an open meeting law superior court trial, it has to be taken as a priority and put number one over all other cases, um, civil cases. That's because they are taken seriously. They were created because of, they were created to balance the power, unquote, quote, unquote, and, and uh, specifically for select boards like this, that they have one man who rules like a fascist and controls everything, has his own set of rules. They don't like this. That's why the open meeting laws were created. Now, you take them lightly, go right ahead. And I'm not going to talk it. I'm, you know, I have no plans to uh, go to Superior Court at this time. But if you really <coughs> want to go, default on one of my complaints. And I'll run there because a default is taken very seriously. So you have to show up and, uh, and, and, and be accountable for these complaints I do. And I wouldn't file complaints. I'm not trying to any, give anyone a hard time. I just don't like all of the non-compliance of the laws. And I will continue to file complaints if you continue to continue to do what you're doing and not complying. It's not fair to me, it's not fair to the rest of the people in this town to not know what's going on and all the other non-compliance issues, which I will continue. Done. Thank you very much, Barry. Steve, do you have anything you'd like to say? Not this minute, no. Okay, very good. I will entertain a motion. Uh, does anybody like to make one? Rick? Make a motion. 
Good. No wrongdoing. No wrongdoing. Okay. Motion's been made and, uh, that there was no wrongdoing. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion that no wrongdoing occurred, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Any other unfinished or new business?